The flight attendant thought she'd seen it all in her years of flying, but when she noticed an odd elderly woman on her plane, everything changed. What she did next shocked everyone on board. Lisa Wong had been a flight attendant for 15 years, and she enjoyed every moment of it. She loved the excitement of takeoff, the satisfaction of helping passengers, and the thrill of visiting new places. But on this particular Tuesday morning at San Francisco International Airport, her usual routine was about to change. As Lisa approached her gate, she noticed a sudden commotion near the security checkpoint. A distressed woman was arguing with TSA agents, her voice loud and filled with urgency. Please, you don't understand. I need to be on that flight. The desperation in the woman's voice sent a shiver down Lisa's spine. Something about the situation made Lisa feel uneasy. She had no idea that her sharp instincts were about to be tested in ways she never expected. As Lisa continued her pre-flight checks, she also noticed an Asian woman in her mid-thirties seated near the back of the plane. The woman seemed agitated, constantly checking her watch and craning her neck to look down the aisle. Lisa made a mental note to keep an eye on her, wondering if she might be an anxious flyer. A few minutes later, Lisa noticed the older woman she'd seen at the checkpoint slowly making her way down the aisle. She was probably in her early 60s, looking around nervously. She moved with difficulty, leaning heavily on a cane. As she approached the row where the Asian woman was seated, she stumbled slightly. Lisa immediately noticed something was off about her behavior. Good morning, ma'am, she said kindly. Can I help you find your seat? The woman jumped a little when Lisa spoke. Oh, yes, please. I'm in 24B. As Lisa guided the woman to her seat, she noticed the woman's hands were shaking as she held her boarding pass. Her clothes were a bit wrinkled, and she seemed more anxious. After helping her sit down, Lisa continued her work, but kept an eye on seat 24B. As the last passengers boarded, she saw a well-dressed man in his forties sitting next to the elderly woman. The woman was tense as he sat, making Lisa even more uneasy. What was going on on this plane, she wondered. Why did everyone seem so on edge? The flight took off without any issues, but Lisa's concern grew. By now, she had ascertained that the Asian woman was just a nervous flyer indeed. But the odd couple in row 24 was still making her brain ache. Every time she walked by them, she noticed the man leaning close to the woman, whispering to her. The woman stared down at her lap, clearly uncomfortable. A few minutes into the flight, Lisa decided to trust her instincts. She approached their row with the drink cart. Would either of you like something to drink? She asked cheerfully. The man quickly responded, I'll have a whiskey and my mother will have water. Lisa was surprised. Mother? They didn't look alike. Something wasn't right. Is that what you want, ma'am? Lisa asked the woman directly. The woman opened her mouth to speak, but the man interrupted. She doesn't drink anything else on flights, right, ma'am? Lisa's heart started pounding. She knew she had to do something, but she couldn't let the man know she was suspicious. She handed them their drinks, purposely spilling some water on the woman's tray table. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lisa said. Let me get you a napkin. As she leaned in, she whispered to the woman, Are you okay? Do you need help? The woman's eyes widened, a brief look of hope crossing her face before fear reappeared. She gave a tiny nod. Lisa's mind raced as she apologized again for the spill. She needed to act quickly, but couldn't risk alarming the man. Back in the galley, she pulled aside her colleague, Mark. I think we have a serious situation, she whispered, explaining what she had noticed. Mark looked serious. We need to tell the captain, but we can't cause a panic. Lisa nodded. I have an idea. Can you cover for me? She quickly wrote a note. If you're in danger, go to the bathroom. I'll meet you there. Then she headed back to row 24. Ma'am, I'm so sorry, but I missed a spot when cleaning up that spill. May I... Lisa pretended to wipe the tray table again and slipped the note into the woman's hand. The woman gripped the note, her eyes briefly meeting Lisa's. Lisa saw a mix of fear and gratitude. A few minutes later, the woman shakily stood up. Excuse me, 
she said to the man. I need to use the restroom. The man frowned but didn't stop her. Lisa's heart raced as she watched the woman walk to the bathroom. As soon as the door closed, Lisa hurried over and knocked softly. It's the flight attendant. Can I come in? The door opened slightly and Lisa slipped inside, locking it behind her. The small space was cramped, but Lisa didn't care. She was face to face with a woman who clearly needed help. What's your name? Lisa asked gently. Rose, the woman whispered, her voice trembling. Please help me. That man, he's not my son. I don't know him. Lisa's suspicions were confirmed. Rose, I'm here to help. Can you tell me what's happening? Tears filled Rose's eyes. I was at the airport, she whispered. My son David was supposed to pick me up. We were going to visit my sister in Chicago. She paused. I'd been waiting an hour when this man approached. He seemed kind at first. Rose glanced at the door before continuing. He said David had been in a car accident on the way to the airport, said he was David's colleague sent to get me. Her voice cracked. I was worried and didn't think. I just wanted to get to my son. The man said we needed to fly to Chicago immediately, that David had been airlifted there. It happened fast. Soon, we were through security and boarding. It wasn't until we were in the air that I realized something was wrong. He wouldn't let me use my phone. Rose met Lisa's eyes. I've been stupid. I don't know this man's name. What if something's happened to David? What's going to happen to me? Lisa felt a chill run through her. This was a kidnapping happening right there on the plane. She took a deep breath, calming herself. Rose, I promise we'll get you out of this. But I need you to be brave for a little longer. Can you do that? Rose nodded, wiping her eyes. What should I do? Go back to your seat and act normal. I'm going to talk to the captain and we'll have help waiting when we land. Don't let the man know we've talked. Rose took a shaky breath. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Lisa squeezed her hand reassuringly before slipping out of the restroom. Rose came out looking calm, even though Lisa could see the fear in her eyes. She nodded and returned to her seat. Lisa quickly went to the cockpit and knocked, using the special code for an emergency. The door opened and she stepped inside. Captain, we have a situation, she said urgently. She explained what she had learned. The captain's expression grew serious. Good job, Lisa. I'll contact air traffic control and alert the authorities on the ground. We need to handle this carefully to avoid alarming the suspect and putting others at risk. Lisa nodded. What should we do in the meantime? Keep an eye on them. Act normal. We'll be landing in a few minutes. The authorities will be ready. As Lisa left the cockpit, she felt both relieved and anxious. Help was coming, but they still had minutes to go without incident. She continued her duties, forcing a smile as she served the passengers. Every time she passed row 24, her heart beat faster. Rose sat still, staring straight ahead, while the man seemed relaxed, sipping his whiskey, unaware that his plan was about to fall apart. As the plane started its descent into Chicago, Lisa made one last round through the cabin. When she reached row 24, she paused. We'll be landing soon, she said, meeting Rose's eyes. Do you need anything before we touch down? Rose shook her head, but Lisa saw the silent thank you in her eyes. The plane landed smoothly and taxied to the gate. Lisa's nerves were on edge as she made the usual announcements, asking passengers to stay seated until the seatbelt sign was turned off. As soon as the plane stopped, the captain's voice came over the intercom. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the delay, but we've been asked to remain on board for a few extra minutes. Please stay in your seats until further notice. Lisa saw the man in row 24 shift uncomfortably. Rose remained still, her hands tightly clasped in her lap. A moment later, the door opened, and instead of the usual ground crew, several police officers boarded the plane. They quickly moved down the aisle and stopped at row 24. Sir, please stand up and put your hands behind your back, 
one officer said firmly. The man's face twisted with anger. He tried to push past Rose, but another officer blocked him. Within seconds, he was in handcuffs and being led off the plane. Lisa rushed to Rose's side. It's over, she said softly. You're safe now. Rose started to cry, her whole body shaking with relief. Lisa held her, whispering comforting words as the other passengers watched in shock and confusion. As the police officers gently helped Rose off the plane, Lisa walked alongside them, offering support. In the jet bridge, a detective approached them. Mrs. Rose, the detective said gently, we need to contact your family. Do you have your son's phone number? Rose nodded, her hands shaking slightly as she recited David's number from memory. The detective quickly dialed on his cell phone and handed it to Rose. David? Oh, David. Rose's voice quavered as her son answered. I'm so sorry. There's been a terrible misunderstanding. Her eyes welled with tears as she listened to David's concerned voice on the other end. While Rose spoke to her son, the detective quietly explained to Lisa that they would need to take her full statement, but their primary concern was ensuring her well-being and reuniting her with her family. As they reached the terminal, Rose ended the call, wiping her eyes. David's catching the next flight here, she told Lisa, relief evident in her voice. He'll be here in a few hours. Lisa squeezed Rose's hand reassuringly. I'm so glad you'll be reunited soon. You were incredibly brave today, Rose. The next few hours were a blur of police interviews and debriefings. Lisa learned that the man was part of a criminal group that targeted vulnerable elderly people. Rose was not only saved, but the police now had a lead on a much larger criminal operation. As the intensity of the moment faded, Lisa found herself in the airport lounge with her crew. They were all excitedly talking about what had happened, but Lisa was quiet, lost in thought. Mark nudged her gently. You okay? Lisa nodded, and a small smile was on her lips. Yeah, I'm just processing it all. It's not every day you save someone's life at 30,000 feet. You should be proud, Mark said. What you did today was amazing. Just then, Lisa's phone buzzed. It was a message from her supervisor. Great job today, Lisa. Your quick thinking and bravery saved a life and helped catch criminals. The airline wants to commend you. Call me when you can. Lisa felt warmth spread through her chest. She had always loved her job but she realized how important it was today. Flight attendants weren't just there to serve drinks and give safety instructions. They were protectors, guardians, and sometimes heroes. What would you have done in Lisa's situation? Have you ever had a gut feeling that something wasn't right? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.